Okay everyone, Wednesday's video from my hotel room in the heart of Sydney. Wonderful views, unbelievable. I did promise that Stevie would be on with me today, uh, sadly or happily, depending on how you feel about him. That's not the case, he had some technical issues. I believe he is going to join me tomorrow. Just a bit of a roundup then today of what's happening Celtic wise and we start with a slight disappointment last night. Celtic women made their long awaited debut in the group stage of the UEFA Women's Champions League. We were playing FC20 who um, based on the group we have and you probably remember it's uh, Chelsea, pretty unbelievable uh, team with filled full of stars, Real Madrid who are not bad as well as you would imagine, uh, and FC20 are a good side, but clearly the the weaker of the three teams that we're going to face, and it was a home game last night, well home in terms of New Douglas Park in Hamilton, big Celtic support there, I believe the Celtic end was uh, was firing on all cylinders, um, I've seen a few videos, sounded like a good atmosphere, but probably looking at our six fixtures in the group stage, the best opportunity to get some points, sadly we weren't able to, uh, we felt a 2-0 defeat to 20 and yeah it may now be a struggle going ahead with a trip to Netherlands still to come double headers against uh, both Chelsea and Real Madrid that Chelsea game's at Celtic Park by the way so that's going to be a really uh, cool occasion but yeah disappointment for them I don't think they were bad in the game from the sounds of things certainly manager Elena Sadiku still says that she's proud of the team despite the defeat and she was keen to point out the huge jump that it is from domestic level to playing against Europe's best probably even more so than uh, than the men's team going from domestic football because I think Celtic find it quite easy at times in the SWPL, but going up to Champions League level is uh, ridiculous. Anyway, Elena Sadiku said, I've said to the girls, being in the group stage, being in the top 16 teams, it's a big difference to playing in Scotland. They should be confident. There are errors we need to fix. I don't know how much people are expecting from us to be in the top 16. What we're doing right now is we're going to fight. We'll try to do everything to get as many points as possible. Uh, next up, doesn't get much easier, Real Madrid away. Moving on, and the men's team tonight have, uh, what would you call it, a mid-season friendly against Sligo Rovers. Um, it's not the biggest game we're going to play, but it's kind of nice to have a bit of uh, of action during the international break, because there's not much else happening. Um, yeah, as I said yesterday, just to reaffirm, the match is being broadcast by League of Ireland TV. I had a wee look in their website, which is loitv.ie. Uh, I'll link that in the description um, if you're unable to remember that. Uh, match pass costs €10, Euro. I believe that's about £8.50. So if you're keen to watch that, you'll be able to do that tonight. Bit of a historical game Celtic-wise as well, actually, because... Um, Sligo is actually the, the birthplace of the, the founder and arguably the most important person in the, the history of our club, Brother Walfred. Now, Ballymote, where he was actually born, uh, Ballymote Celtic tweeted this great image of his statue and pondered whether Celtic would be visiting it ahead of tonight's game. Uh, Cracking statue, isn't it? You'd certainly like to think that'd be something that Celtic would be looking at ahead of um, tonight's game. It's just going to be interesting to see what kind of team we field. As we said yesterday, Brendan Rodgers is, is certainly going to be managing the team. He was speaking about that at the weekend. and He's certainly seen it as an opportunity to, to maybe look at some young players, the likes of Francis Turley, uh, who was pretty um, impressive in the kind of limited glimpses we got of him in pre-season. It was the Queen's Park game, wasn't it, when he came on and and scored the goal. And uh, I think Brendan Rodgers was asked about him more recently. I can't remember exactly when it was, but I remember him being asked about it and given quite a good answer. So I certainly think he, he quite likes Francis Turley. I'm not actually sure if he'll be away with Northern Ireland's youth team now, I'm thinking. That's a bit of the, the issue tonight, is that there's probably a lot of young players that you'd want to see uh, in action sprinkled in with some more experienced fringe players but the difficulty is that we um, have so many of our both young players and even uh, fringe players who are still picked by their international countries the likes of Lewis Palma who's away with Honduras uh, may have been someone who would have featured tonight so it's going to be interesting to see the team that Brendan Rodgers fields 
and yeah hopefully we can get you know something to talk about some some positivity maybe uh, a wee player in there who gives the manager something to think about as we move forward to some more important games but it's a, a sellout tonight as well so if you're watching it it's going to be quite a good atmosphere which always helps pretty big game for Sligo Rovers um, so yeah looking forward to that as I said yesterday obviously no like match reaction or anything we're going to we're going to be bringing you but um we'll discuss it a little bit with uh, stevie tomorrow by the way uh while i remember going to do a bit of a q a uh, or a few q a's over the international break so if you have uh, any questions etc for both stevie or john uh, fire them in the comments below i'll be putting out another post as well where you can do that because uh, it just kind of breaks the international break up a little bit gives us different things we can talk about um, rather than just discussing the little news that is happening. Uh, one bit of news that has happened actually regarding one of our Champions League opponents, uh, young boys have sacked their manager Patrick Ramen after just five months in charge. They've had a pretty horrendous start to the season. They are sitting bottom of the UEFA Champions League table, not like us, all the way up there in, in mid-table. They are also uh, actually bottom of the Swiss top flight as well. Now, they are obviously champions. They won the league last year. But they're sitting bottom of the Swiss league, having taken just six points from a possible 27 so far. So a disastrous start to them uh, for them this season. We don't play them until the, the penultimate match of our campaign, January the 22nd at Celtic Park. So clearly a lot of time between now and then. What's that? What's um, that? three and a half months, so a lot of time, but they're clearly acting now and they've uh, removed their manager and you would think they're going to have some sort of an improvement, certainly domestically going forward. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's not another one of these cases where a team is really struggling and you're kind of licking your lips at them coming up uh, on, the, on the fixture list and then they remove their manager and, and suddenly hit some new form. So we'll wait and see. That young boys game is looking like a pretty pivotal one for us in our Champions League campaign. I think it was John last week made the point after the Dortmund game that we really just have to be going into that young boys game minimum six points. For me, seven would be kind of the minimum because then if we beat young boys, you move on to 10 and 10 is pretty much guaranteed to get us into the, the top 24. So... Um, yeah, still so many games to go in a European campaign. Atalanta up next is going to be tough, I think, to get anything. Leipzig at home, I think, will be different. Uh, obviously, a very tough game. Stevie rates them higher than any team, I think. He really likes Leipzig, thinks they'll be even tougher than Dortmund. I just think at Celtic Park, it'll be very different, and I fancy us to get uh, some sort of result in that game, even if it's a, a draw. And then after that, you're really looking at games where we're going to have to try and get points if we're going to make it to the knockouts. You know, Club Bruges at home, Dinamo Zagreb away. They've also changed their manager recently. And then that young boys game at home. Don't really fancy Aston Villa up last. So, yeah, that's the situation there. Uh, not a bad place to be in Europe-wise, but obviously the last game is on everyone's mind still. Now, the main thing I just wanted to mention today... Uh, it was a report from Stephen McGowan at the Daily Mail. Uh, speaking about Celtic knocking back a chance to have some home games shown on Premier Sports. Now, as I'm sure you'll know, Sky Sports are still the, the main lead broadcasters of the Scottish Premiership. They're uh, able to show up to 60 matches per season. Chances are they won't hit that number. They're also uh, given an opportunity to show extra games, I think up 20 extra games, so up to a total of 80. Um, but again, they, they've not taken up that option. So basically, this new thing we've had this season is that if Sky don't take up those extra matches, which they haven't, those extra matches can be sold to another broadcaster. And that's why we've seen some matches so far this season shown on Premier Sports. Uh, our game against St. Johnson last weekend, for example, was shown in Premier Sports. Rangers St. Johnson on um, the very, very weird kickoff, 8pm was it, on Sunday night was in Premier Sports. They also had like Dundee Hearts earlier in the season, possibly a, a Dundee Derby as well. So Premier have been showing these extra games. Um, and in the past, like that trip to St. Johnson last weekend would only have been available for fans to get on pay-per-view. So I think this is a positive thing generally. Um, more games being broadcast is good for Scottish football as long as the right games are, are chosen. 
Um, Premier are down to show seven more games between now and the end of 2024, but none of those will be at Celtic Park uh, because the Mail are reporting that we have opted out of uh, a deal to show, uh, I think, up to two games at Celtic Park and Premier Sports this season. Now, had we agreed... Uh, Our game, uh, not this weekend, but next weekend at home to Aberdeen, that huge game that people are talking about, may have been able to to have been broadcast in Premier Sports, but that isn't going to be the case uh, because Celtic are said to have put season ticket holders first and uh, and not inconvenienced them by potentially moving the kick-off to a a lunchtime start or an evening start on Saturday. So it's going to be staying at 3pm. It's not going to be broadcast on television. Uh, and there was £75,000 on the table for Celtic here had they agreed to switch a match at Celtic Park to, to be shown in Premier. So, yeah, as much as that's not an eye water in some, not for us, we're millions and millions in the bank, uh, it's still positive that the club are putting fans first. And I really like the fact that that Aberdeen game next weekend is a 3pm kickoff. Um I think there's something really special about still having major games 3pm, not on, on television. I know, I, I mean, I got a comment in yesterday from, from a supporter saying that, um, well, let's, let's get it up, actually. So it was from uh, BT Gissy, for, I've mucked that up, but you get the gist. Uh, I don't agree that it's good any time Celtic aren't on TV. As someone that works a lot and doesn't drive, also has always watched Celtic on TV their whole lives. Going to games was never a thing for me. I've been to a few when I could. Also, it's ridiculously hard to get a ticket nowadays, apart from friendlies and Masters games. I don't even understand really how to get a ticket. I think every fan has a right to watch the game regardless of at game or on TV. We all know... There are far more than 60,000 Celtic fans in the world. What's the point of being a Celtic fan if you can never see the games and just check the scores on an app? We want to watch the games. You know, listen, you make a lot of fair points there. And like, I I was aware of that. Um, My point yesterday was that for me, I think it's quite nice that supporters who have forked out of this money. And I, and I get I get the point that you're maybe not able to, or people aren't able to for a number of reasons. The main one being that you maybe just can't get the chance to buy tickets because of the demand. I just think for season ticket holders who have put like this money into the club and do it every year, a, a substantial sum, um, I think it's quite nice just for one game and a big game that they're the ones who really get to see it and... Um, personally, that's just how I feel. But listen, I'm I'm not going to games at the moment. I'm on the other side of the world, so it's not as if I'm speaking as a, a season ticket holder here. Um, and and I just I think it's quite a nice um, a nice thing that it's a Saturday three p.m. Obviously, it can't be on TV if it's a, a Saturday three p.m. due to the blackout rule. So I like the fact that game next Saturday is going to be pretty special for that reason. It's going to be full. But no, I, I take your point on board there. Um, I knew it would be a divisive issue, to be honest, but most things are these days. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. So Celtic aren't going to have games at Celtic Park shown on Premier Sports. It's just Sky coming up. Um, these are just our, our upcoming league clashes that are on TV and, and on Sky Sports. The next one's Motherwell away on Sunday the 27th of October. That's a 3pm kickoff, uh, alive on Sky 3pm on a Sunday, that's the case as well for our next one against Kilmarnock, 3pm on a Sunday in November. Uh, we then have a 7.45pm Saturday night trip to Tynecastle as the unusual kickoffs continue. Big fan of that one, even if it does bring back memories of Ange Postacoglu's first day. Uh, domestic match and the the feat we had there uh, that'll be pretty special at the start of december we have our wednesday night trip to aberdeen that's live in sky again a game under the lights away to aberdeen going to be pretty special especially how they're playing we then have a sunday noon trip to tanadice being shown by the broadcasters as well as our visit to ibrox at the start of 2025 so some pretty cool Kickoff time's coming up. I can't wait for the Aberdeen ones, all of the Aberdeen games, including the Cup Semi, that's a half five kickoff on a Saturday evening. Uh, the Saturday night trip to Hearts is going to be special as well. Um, so, yeah, pretty exciting period coming up. As I say, uh, tomorrow Stevie will join me. We'll rattle through some of your questions and get on to various 
uh, topics and tangents only fit for the international break. Thanks everyone uh, for sticking with the channel during the break. I really appreciate you watching the videos when there's not as much going on, but we'll keep the Celtic chat going. There's always stuff to talk about and I will return tomorrow.